Dan Early, co-host, chief engineer of Origin Clear. There he is. Dan is going to be uh, laying out some of these cool water and demand projects later in the show, but we have so much to cover. Once again, this is water's new gold and is turning out to be a, an amazingly recession-proof market given how much it's tracking with the real inflation out there. It is the 29th briefing number 108. A quick look at our safe harbor statement, basically that we do our best to um, make correct statements, but of course they, they are subject to risks and uncertainties like everything. I have a quick video to play. Well, hello everyone. And I'm privileged to be speaking with Teresa Solorio, who is managing the St. Germain partnership. Am I right? Right, it's the RJ and CS St. Germain partnership. I really like the direction that Origin Clear has gone and what it is doing now. Because of that, we've been continuing to invest and I feel like we've been some pretty loyal partners in this. And I think that it's gonna pay off. I feel the management of Origin Clear now is all connected and in tune with each other. And because of that, the strides that you're making in the direction you're going uh, are only going to be positive. So I'm, I'm really pleased to be a part of it. We, we think we're starting to move the needle. So it's, it's great to hear that from you. Well, I just like how the management are moving with the future. Like you say, not staying in the back, not putting yourself into this one little sphere of this is what you're going to look like, but have said, mm, this is working. No, that's not working. You know, we see a different need. I, I, I like that. I feel it, it makes my investment more powerful and uh, down the road and more profitable. It's so invigorating to hear these words and please, uh, you know, convey my heartfelt thanks for you guys' support. Well, I appreciate that. And I want to say that I thank you guys for being so accessible because when there's concerns and or questions, I have always gotten immediate answers. So, well, that is music that. to my ears because it's the most important thing. Teresa, I wanted to thank you for your time on this. It's been very pleasurable. Have a great rest of week and uh, let's stay in touch, okay? All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, Riggs. This is a very cool group, the St. Germain Partnership. They actually invested as early as our algae days. So they've been around for more than 10 years and they are happy with how it's been going. So that was a very heartwarming interview. And we're going to, we're going to be having more of these. We're asking people who, you know, for example, like, uh, like the Rutans to, to make uh, commentary and it's cool to actually hear how we're doing well. Okay. And we're also gonna be hearing uh, good news shortly about how well things are going with operations. But first, I'm going to cover some more of this presentation. All right. Now, what's the latest um, annual report? What the heck is going on? Well, we are, I cannot say exactly when we're going at this point. I literally cannot tell you exactly when we're filing, but it is very soon. As to the fixing of the problem, why the heck did this thing get so late? It's primarily about getting a good CFO. The update on that is uh, this week we interviewed a, vet, a fantastic candidate who has headed public companies, very large, who's done the whole thing and really knows an uh, amazingly qualified person. Uh, we are vetting two more, including one that was referred to us by the, the uh, ever helpful Artie Marin. And we've reached out to 10 additional prospects. We are on track for having a CFO on the job this summer. And that is a super high priority because I don't intend to have this happen ever again. Okay, now there was a tease this afternoon about President Biden's address, uh, what's good and what's missing. So let's talk about what was great. This American Jobs Plan, which is the infrastructure plan, largest jobs plan since uh, World War II, it has within it the largest ever allocation for clean water, more than $100 billion. Uh, one of the goals is to remove 100% of the lead in every American water pipe. And believe me, Flint, Michigan is not the only place that's got a problem. Mandates by American, which is fantastic because our own progressive water treatment has been around for 20 years, highest quality, and they want the parts and assemblies to be American because then they can really guarantee end-to-end uh, -end on site products for you know the, the life of the product. So this is really, really good. Now, 
what's wrong? What's missing? Well, let's take a look at the oil and gas industry as an example. The oil and gas industry has something called intangible drilling costs, IDCs. They've been allowed since 1913. You can take an immediate deduction in the same taxable year of your expenses. What are they? Everything except the equipment itself. And it's all labels intangible because you can't, it has no value after the well stops you working. So I'll tell you why this is good, um, you know, better than existing um, depreciation methods. The other thing that the oil industry had is a depletion allowance. They get to, uh, it is the, uh, one of the most tax advantage investments available in the United States. And 15% of gross income is tax free for these investors. And that's on the theory that the extraction is, um, is a depletion of what you might call non-renewable uh, resources. Well, how does this relate to water, you might ask? Well, we have $111 billion in the American Jobs Plan, the biggest yet, but we know that's only one year of gap. The investment gap is $105 billion per year. This, thing, uh, this is a report in 2016. And uh, by uh, 2040, the gap will be 150. So it's getting worse. And as you know, we know that this is driving local businesses to do their own treatment, which is you know, a win-win definitely, because it means that these water districts, which are not catching up, even with this huge water bill, are going to have less of a load. And so there's hope there if we can make these local businesses pull up the slack. This is, of course, why we have what we call water on demand, which enables these private businesses to pay on a paper gallon basis, which is what, Dan, you'll be reviewing with us uh, very shortly. All right. And then, of course, we want to expand this out to, to a marketplace. And we'll get to that. For now, we want to get this thing right ourselves. So what if these local businesses could expense their intangible water system costs. That's better than the uh, Section 179 accelerated depreciation, which is being it, we're able to depreciate everything in the first year, but it's only on assets and you have to have active business income. In the oil and gas business, the intangible depreciation, you can make $1 and you can depreciate $100,000. So it's far better. And the second thing is, what about a water depletion allowance? Water is becoming scarcer. And there's a very bad, I call it a good example, it's a bad example, but the Ogallala in the Midwest, which you'd think would have lots of water, it's a vast aquifer in eight states, one fifth of all produce in the United States. It has been drawn down as much as 234 feet and would take 6,000 years to refill once drained. So water is being depleted. And I think that's a very powerful uh, argument to make. So let's call it something like the Blue Renewal Plan. And this, by applying essentially what oil and gas gets, we could support the renewal of water and help local businesses. Now, I can't tell you that this thing, this is, this is not something I'm saying, you know, we're going to go to Washington and get it passed. We got a lot to do here. But it's a very powerful argument to make in the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting PR opportunities with Forbes and a bunch of other publications. I want to be able to sit, tell these stories and make these points. And it really makes the point about, hey, oil is getting better treated than water in this country. And yet water is pure survival. So that's where this is going. All right. So Dan, I'm going to um, now jump into this thing called DBOO, Design, Build, Own, Operate. And I have a currently progressive water treatment and modular water systems. You guys do design and build and you ship it. You say, we'll give you warranty support. It's all good. Well, own and operate means that you uh, finance the machine up front. Either the bank finances it for you or the, in some cases, the, the government helps you, SBA, whatever. But we, the, the, the strong thing to do is to have your own capital to invest, which is what we are accumulating now. And then you operate it on a pure outsourced basis. And it looks kind of like this. This is a, a diagram that I, that I did, um, which shows Origin Clear. And it has its own wholly owned subsidiary, Progressive Water, and a division called Modular Water Systems. And Water Water Systems contributes to the designing and building of these systems. 
What's new now is we've got these other wholly owned subs. We've now created water on demand number one and more will follow number, number two, number three, number X, whatever. And they send finance systems. They pay for systems built by progressive water uh, with of course the Wadra water uh, designs as well. And what, what do we need to do? Well, it, it, the progressive water delivers the systems but there has to be managed services. And that's where we need to build the operation and maintenance subsidiary that we are either gonna buy it, you know, acquire the subsidiary, which is a challenge because that, that um, know-how is actually pretty precious, or we go ahead and build the capability. Either way, we also have an overflow capability where we can finance the work of qualifying water companies where you, Dan, would come in and say, okay, you know, our friends at Edge up in Atlanta, they're a good company they, and they have a great you know, machine that we, we, we're willing to certify. And now water demand can finance those. So it expands beyond us. And that's the beautiful vision of it. So that's kind of how it looks. And we're obviously fleshing it out. All right. And which brings us to you, my friend. And um, we're going to be reviewing uh, what you've got going because I gave you a mandate gosh, about a week ago to start. I said, money is burning a hole in my pocket. And um, because we've been doing extremely well with our investors, we've had huge support. And so now we have a treasury and we're able to get going, even without these water on demand subsidiaries being fully liquid, because as you know, real estate's coming in, it takes forever to, to leverage, et cetera. Well, we're just going ahead and out of our normal treasury paying for these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to a redacted version of your report and enable you to go through it. There are some terms that you're probably gonna to want to uh, tell us what the heck it means, mm -hmm. but DBO status update, this is brand, brand new today. So we have a mobile home park, wastewater treatment plant uh, with an Everest, Everest skid, and that is a containerized system. Yeah, that is correct. Everest skid is our containerized wastewater treatment system. It's our plug and play above ground installation. An MBR means membrane bioreactor, which basically, what does that do? Uh, a membrane bioreactor is an advanced uh, filtration device. It actually stays submerged in the wastewater treatment system, and it does the liquid, liquid solid separation. It's a filter system. It's a, one of the more advanced forms of uh, wastewater treatment. So this, this mobile home park is under a court order, and it has to do it. They love the idea of a fully outsourced model. And uh, Progressive Water Treatment believes that this could be at least a 10-year uh, uh, contractual life cycle. And as, as we've been discussing the O&M built in and so forth, it's about a $300,000 capital cost. Obviously, we're still working out the service costs. So what's the status? Well, we're working directly with the rep and the end user's engineer of record and who recommended Everskid actually. And this is well done to you for uh, payback for all the webinars you do. <laughs> correct, correct. You get, you, you, you've got your action. Anyway, so it's, uh, it actually is the only one that would work for DBOO actually. And the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, um, it would meet the requirements of that discharge permit. So where are we going with this? We're gonna enter into an agreement for the package uh, it was submitted and initial comments. Uh, we intend to have blah, blah, blah. All this is to be done, but looks like this thing could execute as early as July 1st. So that's excellent. Let's take a look at a brewing company, 5,000 gallons per day, MBR, also never skid. And they are an existing craft beer producer. And here is this thing that keeps happening to breweries is that they have too much, too much organic waste and too much of it. And so they end up having to truck the stuff away to another county and um, they're spending money on that. And it's becoming more, it's growing, obviously these expenses are growing. And um, what is a, a local sewer's SIU limit? What is SIU? Um, SIU, significant industrial user is the EPA, uh, EPA mandate where all local public utilities have to impose treatment limits for industrial dischargers. And of course, those limits are becoming more drastic as the capability of the cities is becoming degraded. Now, this customer is sophisticated. The MBR treatment system is viable. 
et cetera, et cetera. April, okay. And so we have a follow-up meeting. We have a uh, preliminary dialogue going on here. And expectations are the Praf Brewery could be 20 years plus or minus. Very interesting. There's a, now let me comment on this one right here. The, what I like about this particular customer when it comes to the DBOO model, uh, they, are, they are in the business of brewing beer, making craft, be making craft beverages. They are not in the business of owning and operating a utility. Of course. So what they would prefer to do, they would prefer to see a, an entity like ours come in and provide them with a soup to nuts, A to Z turnkey solution. We can provide the equipment. We can bring in the engineering and design team. We can operate this system. And basically all they have to do is to pay a monthly bill. And you can set these things up on five-year terms, 10-year terms. My expectation on this one is that it is a commercial enterprise, the life cycle probably 20 years. We, I mean, that's that's a long, that's a long gestational cycle for a for a business to run its full gamut. So that's that's the reason why I think it's a 20-year possibility. Absolutely. Well, you know, we saw with Russian River Brewery that um, Cambrian did, and they signed a 15-year service contract. So I think that that's quite reasonable. So it looks like uh, budget is about 225 and uh, further equipment, SOS and pricing. SOS? Scope of supply. Scope of supply. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me continue. A commercial park, private commercial real estate development currently in the final vesting rights stage. What is it? What do we mean by vesting rights? So vesting rights, if you are a land developer, you're uh, in the real estate development market, uh, you have to go through the local planning ordinances and planning uh, processes to seek your local approvals. And as commonly referred to as a vesting rights uh, phase, uh, where you're going to get your, your master plan approved, you're doing any rezonings that need to be rezoned, all of those things are approved by the local zoning boards and that type of thing. Good. Uh, essentially, it enables the development to go ahead. Right. Once they get, once they check those boxes and their vesting rights are approved, they can rock on with their the final site development and move forward into construction. So this is a twenty five thousand gallon per day containerized system. Everest get again. What is IFAS? Integrated film activated sludge. It's uh, one of the many different types of biological treatment that we provide with the modular water system product. Now it is, it is less. Uh, it, it, it it's cheaper than an MBR. Am I right? It is. IFAS, IFAS, IFAS systems are more commonly utilized in what I call standard treatment or entry-level treatment where you don't need to treat to a very stringent mm -hmm. uh, permit. So that's the reason why you see the IFAS system used. Excellent. $25,000 per day, plug and play. Uh, they want, they, they, they have to have that. They have to put in a system. They have to put in their own closed circuit system because the public sewer is too far out, et cetera. Uh, and would be interested in doing the outsourcing thing. Uh, civil engineers working on this. Uh, and this, um, about a 350 TCEQ. What is TCEQ? TC, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Okay, that so it's the, the local uh, Devar <laughs> department of- That's uh, right, it's the state DEQ. It's their environmental uh, department. Got it. All right, this is a more expensive system and it looks like it's a little bit, it's not quite as well, well along as the others. It's, it's probably, I would say about 60 to 90 days behind the other two. The other two are much more, uh, much further down the road, much, much more developed. Um, in fact, the, uh, the uh, mobile home park, the very first one we looked at, that customer is, uh, they're in the final engineering phase and um, we've gotten budgetary prices in front of them. Very, uh, the high probability of that one is, very, very hot. Which one? Which one is the most uh, probable at this point? The mobile home park, the very first one that we looked at. Fantastic. Yes, that Fantastic. One right there. Three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Well, this is this is really exciting. So what we're doing here is we're moving ahead as fast as we can with our test system, taking some some, some of the amazing investment money that's been coming in to uh, devote it to this. So this is uh, going to allow us to get into full gear uh, while the remainder of the capital comes in. So that is wonderful. I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. It's just so cool. So thank you for, for pursuing this. And obviously there's much more in your pipeline that could be 
uh, but you don't want to like open up the door to everybody and then say, no, well, actually we don't have the capital yet. So <laughs> yeah. it can be, it can be a, a, yeah, it can be a challenge. Yes, sir. Uh, we've had multiple opportunities come in the last seven days. Uh, the, the DBOO opens up doors in ways that, uh, that you can't open them with regular delivery models. Yes. And again, we have to be cautious because, uh, you know, we're still in the capital raise side of building water on demand. We opened, well, I'm going to describe the, um, the offering actually. Um, so what are we talking about here? Of course, we're talking about, Ken, are you in the house? Here we go. I am. I, um, I was muted, but I am in the house. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Uh, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> I, think was, I, I, think, I think it was the A-team, right? I think it was the A-team. 80s television shows for 100, Alex. Nice, nice. Good work. Well, and um, Dan, uh, you, you, you took your video off. I just want to thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, I'm really happy with how you're doing. So thank you. Very welcome, Riggs. Glad to be a part of it. Right on. So Ken, you know, you, you, you hadn't even heard the part about the, um, the oil and gas co comparison, but I think it's a really good one. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for, yeah, thanks for slipping that. I was on, wow, yeah, that was fun. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to have some more discussions on that tomorrow. I, I definitely want to drill down on that with you. Yes, no, it you know, actually came from, um, Dan, you'll be interested, that idea came from uh, our Steve Hall, who is the client with his wife, Claudia, on our first Ponster installation. And he's a CPA. And he just said, Riggs, Riggs, oh my gosh. And uh, he got very excited about it. And it, it was literally this afternoon at 3.30. So he actually is, is, wants to help us figure this stuff out, which is great. But um, we are, obviously we're planning to have them uh, on video, et cetera, around the whole Ponster thing. But let's talk a little bit about the options here. We are in the investment cycle. People who, can, who are accredited are able to come in and get the double-digit dividends, the stock redemption, and the triple warrants. Then if you are good for a million-dollar investment, that's, that's these water demand units. And we've opened the $20 million private placement. And then we're working on a couple of crowdfunding. Uh, one is to build water demand units with unaccredited investors. And we're in discussions with the portal on that. And finally, uh, we have a team working on replacing the existing unaccredited investment round that we had that became obsolete on 27 March. So Ken, it's been going incredibly on number one here on uh, building this capability, so much so that we're actually able to put some money on these uh, DBOO systems. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I've made a multiple similar comments to you during the course of the week. Once you arrive here and you start to describe it, you almost ask yourself, how did we not get here sooner? <laughs> like, yeah, in other words, once you've invented something, you go, I can't believe I didn't think of this, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I think, you know, as I describe how we position this, I, I hear a lot of people kind of say to me, so this really isn't that dissimilar from something in um, high tech, you know, they've made, and, and they've, they've, they've said that the, the, the contract is very similar to a service contract, as simple as a consumer product like a phone, like a cell phone. You know, I think the service level agreement uh, is very, very powerful. I, I often I got into a conversation with today, and I said, "Well, look, imagine if you're an internet." So you know, you know I've been having this terrible problem at my office with the internet, right? So, right. Anyway, so I've been you know crying and moaning about it, and I said, "Imagine if I was an internet service provider." who got a guy like me on the phone and said, look, I'll guarantee you a thousand megabits per second. You only pay for the minutes that you get a thousand. I'd be the only internet service provider in a week, right? In the <laughs> world. And because nobody promises quality, you know, basically you're going to pay your 600 bucks a month, no matter what, you know, sometimes you'll get close to your thousand megabits per second. And very often you'll fall well below that. And we've come to accept that as consumers. Well, it's the best you've got. By, by setting up this system and by creating that guarantee of quality, we've literally eliminated any need for anyone not to engage in this process. So our, our investors, you know, when I first joined three years ago, what was the first comment I made to you? I said, you have the greatest, because at the time they were your investors, now they're our investors, but I said, you have the greatest investors in the world. People that so believed in what we were doing, 
they're also some of the smartest investors because they, and maybe it's because they followed us along for so long and they've kind of viewed our progress over the past you know, six months or so, but they've already intuitively, intuitively arrived at where we're taking the company. And the excitement is just incredible, just incredible. And I'm, it's, you know, it's a pleasure. I'm exhausted, but um, it, it's a pleasure to, to, you know, to engage in this. Well, your, your Calendly um, bookings is a testimony to how hard you've been working. But uh, <laughs> I got a break yesterday. I, I, I shouldn't say that because now I'll get clubbed. But um, yeah, I got a little bit of a break in the action. So I thought I could eat a meal. It was going to be Oh, cold. my God. Yeah, yeah. At, like not at my desk. I mean, I was going to live like a king. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, however, there are some slots uh, available for next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to book you up. People can just type oc.go slash Ken. The, the Riggs diet. But there is actually for another day or so the existing. Tomorrow. Exactly. The existing series R, which is the 200% redemption is um, still on. So it, it stayed, it stayed on longer than we thought because we were waiting for an investor to bring his money in. But now, Tomorrow, that money is expected, and we are closing things down. So, um, well, JRW says good evening, everyone. Keith Rutten says very cool, thank you. And that Keith was commenting on that uh, point of use uh, slideshow that you had, Dan. And what we're going to do is, um, I'd like to actually cover your experience talking to the engineers every week or two with these webinars, what you're presenting, what you're experiencing. Um, and, and how is it, you know, driving, you know, the, the quality and the quantity of the business as well as its viability. And then I would love, I would love the opportunity. Fantastic guys. It's been amazing. I'm, I'm as always blown away by how many people stick around on these shows. It, even though we get technical sometimes, but um, we're going to be seeing you next week. And what I'd like to do is bring Dan back uh, with this cool presentation that some people saw before the show started because of this show before the show. And, uh, you know, again, Dan, thank you so much. Uh, Ken, I have to say you've been, you've been uh, a one arm paper hanger for the last few weeks and I thank you for it. My pleasure. All right, everyone. Thank you. Uh, it's been a wonderful show and be sure to tune in next week. And meanwhile, have a wonderful weekend. Bye.